Can you see the mantis in this clip? Yeah, neither can I. That's kind of the problem. I knew these guys were rare, and with their incredible camouflage, they're really difficult to see. But the more we're out here looking around, I'm realizing this is probably one of the hardest mantises to find in the US. The palmetto scrubs of southern Florida are home to some of the strangest creatures in North America. From incredibly venomous spiders to some of the most bizarre insects on the planet, searching these expanses of wilderness is truly like searching for secret items in a video game. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and from a young age, I was always fascinated with insects and other creepy crawlies. Exploring my backyard for the tiny animals that live unseen right alongside us sparked a curiosity that I carry with me today on my mission to uncover the secret of the natural world. And one group of incredibly secretive insects that I've always been drawn to are the praying mantises. You can barely see him. You might not even notice it, but that is an American grass mantis. Now this is exactly one of the things we hope to find coming to this habitat. The American grass mantis is a really strange looking animal. Across the United States, there are tons of strange and rare species of praying mantis that you'd be surprised to actually exist. But there is one particular mantis that stands above all others, as perhaps the hardest to find in North America, the grizzled mantis. Many have searched for it and many have failed. Most sightings occur by accident, as if this strange arthropod only appears when it decides to. I've been on quite a few outings to Florida, and each time I kept my eyes peeled for this elusive insect, and every time I came up empty-handed. So on this trip, I have a secret weapon. My good friend Mikey Green, a fellow wildlife educator and insect researcher, who has also been searching for the grizzled mantis for years. My hope is that with our combined experience, skill, and a little bit of luck, we'll find one of these rare mantises at long last. But first, it's time to head into the palmetto scrubs and see what we can find. Today we're looking for grizzled mantises because they're really cool. And because they are a creepy crawly creature, they are, they're an animal, they're not a fungus, even though they look like fungus. They're a creepy crawly creature, or dare I say a, a critter. They are a cool critter. And there is a there's a cool critters right here in the background. He's been distracted by a grasshopper. I'm probably also going to be distracted by the grasshopper because it's a pretty big one. This is a grasshopper that I might say is possibly potentially cool. Maybe also a critter. There she is. Oh, that's Captain. I don't see her yet, but I know this is the patch she's in. Yep, I see her. If I go quick, I can probably grab her. Yeah. I think I got her. Yep, I got her. Nice. There she is. Look at you. You're pretty. Have a look at this. This is a huge Cuban bird grasshopper. I love these guys. They can be a bit challenging to catch because they are fast and they can fly really well. That's where they get the name bird grasshopper. You see their wings are extremely long, which give them incredible flight ability and those powerful back legs launch them into the air and uh, these guys can be gone in an instant have a look at this amazing patterning these animals will be incredibly camouflaged on the ground of this scrub palmetto environment when they take off and zoom and then disappear into the brush a predator can easily lose them but i've been hunting grasshoppers for years so i've learned their tricks a little bit this is actually a species i haven't seen before nice little lifer here in florida look at you Yes, you're very aggravated. You can see she's vibrating that back leg. It's a defense mechanism they'll do when they've been picked up by a predator. See, their back leg is covered in all kinds of spines. And for me, for my skin, you know, I don't feel it a whole lot, but for like a lizard or something, if it gets those spines in its eye, you know, this, this grasshopper could blind it. Now they're not venomous or anything, but they are sharp. And uh, what she's basically trying to do and she's trying to get me to let her go so she can escape back into the environment here. But no, I gotta show you the viewers. Little Cuban grasshopper, we're gonna let her go. We're not looking for grasshoppers today. We're looking for a praying mantis and an even, even more special praying mantis than you've probably seen before. So with any luck out here in this habitat, we'll get our hands on a grizzled mantis. Grasshoppers, 
the staples of any good habitat. These herbivorous insects come in many shapes, colors, and sizes, but the recurring theme is that where there are grasshoppers, there are a plethora of insect predators. Our target mantis is mostly arboreal and have a really interesting hunting technique I hope to show you if we get one, but given their opportunistic nature, I'm sure they wouldn't pass up a tasty grasshopper given the chance. Seeing a ton of insect activity is always a good sign if you're hunting for an insect predator, and around the bend, I stumbled onto something really weird. Check this out. Little toothpick grasshopper. Probably can't see him. Let's see if I can grab him. This is a toothpick grasshopper, and you get their name because they look just like a toothpick or a little piece of stick. Now, out here in a palmetto scrub, this would give him perfect, perfect camouflage in the little scrub grasses. Their very drab colored, thin appearance means they don't stick out at all. Uh, I only saw him, I saw him jump. I was able to track where he landed visually. These are extremely easy to lose in this environment, but they're actually everywhere. I absolutely love camouflaged cryptic insects like this. This is an example of mimicry. This animal mimics the plants that it hides on. A really incredible feat of evolution there. This is something that over millions of years has evolved to be more and more slender. It had that long pointy head. It looks just like a piece of grass or a dead pine needle. And to predators, that's not very enticing. How about that? Now grasshoppers are among my favorite insects, but camouflaged grasshoppers are extremely special. Absolutely love seeing these guys. And believe it or not, this is actually a full grown adult. This particular species never has wings. So they're totally ground dwelling scrub grass feeding species, just living out their lives, hopping from blade of grass to blade of grass out here in this absolutely beautiful habitat. So uh, we actually ended up having to call it a day after that toothpick grasshopper because um, we had a little accident with an animal out in the field. Uh, and I needed to go back to base camp immediately and get medical attention. We actually got that accident on camera, um, but that video is not coming out yet because I'm still documenting um, the effects of what happened. That will go out sometime later this year. Uh, if that's something that you are interested in seeing, consider subscribing to the channel and tune in every Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern. But it's funny because a friend of mine had warned me that Florida is a weird place. The longer you're there and the more you ask of it, the higher likelihood that you get kicked in the teeth. And uh, I, I definitely got kicked in the teeth on this outing. But fortunately, within 24 hours, I was able to get back in the field. So we decided to give it one more shot. And wouldn't you have it, we're poking around a tree line right by the parking lot, literally just getting B-roll of us searching around the shrubs and stuff. And I swear within 90 seconds, we had the luckiest break of our lives. Yo, what? no. Uh-uh-uh. What is it? What is it? Oh my God, are you real? What is it? What is it? It's real. What is it? You oh. see it? No. <laughs> no. No. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is something I wanted to see for a long time. And I don't 100% know how it's gonna behave, but I'm gonna see if I can get it to go right on my hands. Um, I'm just hoping. I'm, I'm gonna eat these words if she runs up the tree. Mikey, are you on standby? Yeah, I'm on standby. Okay. It's okay. Okay, she's not darting. She's not darting. Come here. Don't, oh, 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 uh -oh. oh, 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 okay. Oh, uh, it's a quick one. <gasps> it's fast. Look at they move. That is such a strange way they walk. There we walk. go. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Oh man, now this is a special animal right here. Honestly, I can't even fully believe that I'm holding it because I saw it and I was like, no. Because I've been looking for this mantis for a very, very long time. You're like, Spencer, it's just a praying mantis. What's, what's the deal? Look at it. Look how weird it looks. You see that bizarre patterning and shape? Yeah, see that is why this praying mantis is special. This is the grizzled mantis, and it's probably the most camouflaged praying mantis in North America. And 
This is a native species. There are a few other bark mantises like this in Florida, but this one is native and an absolute treasure of Florida wilderness. And that bizarre appearance is actually key to its really special biology. See, these guys are ambush hunters, like other praying mantises. But unlike most praying mantises, they're a little weird, which is why I've been after them for so long. Every time I'm in Florida, I'm always looking out on trees to see if I can see a pair of eyes staring back at me. And finally, finally, Florida has it delivered. Now, these guys have both disruptive and mimic-based camouflage. Usually, praying mantises are just kind of slender and stick-like and are nondescript green or brown, and they rely on that slender appearance to blend in. But this one has the whole nine yards. If you've watching the channel for a long time, you know how much I like camouflaged insects. And just look at this thing. Not only is its shape like a piece of lichen sticking out on a bark, look at that patterning. That patterning obscures its outline so it doesn't look like a praying mantis. And that's very useful for defending itself from predators, but it's also extremely useful for hiding from prey. See, I said there were ambush predators. These guys aren't out actively hunting. They can move pretty quick if they're disturbed, but they're not chasing down their prey. They're sitting there and they're waiting, but the way that they wait is extremely unusual. See, we've covered praying mantises here on the channel and we know that they're extremely smart. And this one is no exception. You can see as she's walking over my hands here, she's kind of figuring things out. She's looking at me, she's looking at the camera. She's very aware, very intuitive. The praying mantis will actually sit there and kind of piece things together, kind of like a jumping spider. So I, I compare these guys to uh, the cats of the invertebrate world as well. This particular species has an extremely unique hunting strategy that no other North American praying mantis has. Rather than sitting and wait on a bush or in grass, these guys sit really flat against bark with their head pointed down, and they're almost exclusively found pointed downwards. Here's why. They're taking advantage of the behavior of their prey. See, this is an arboreal species. Another reason why it's so, so special to be able to see, because they're usually hiding way up in trees. But their prey is also hiding way up in trees as well, which means in order to get there, they have to climb. And that means they have to climb right past this guy. Little insect walks right past, they'll shoot out those two front raptorial claws, grab the prey, and eat it alive. They are really gnarly predators out here. Unparalleled apex predators of that bark microhabitat. I love the way they sit. It's not like any other species. They hold their claws a lot more tucked in. You can kind of even see they have little grooves in their armor that allow them to tuck in even better. They've been perfectly evolved for this environment and for their really interesting hunting strategy. This is one I never thought I would get this close to. Not for a long time. Wow. In the state of Florida, sometimes you have to go to hell and back to get your hands on some of its more coveted wildlife. Hunting the grizzled mantis and seeing its bizarre hunting strategy in person was something I've always wanted to see, but it's got me thinking. There are whispers of another, even rarer mantis that has a very similar lifestyle. A mantis that is not native to the US, but exists in tiny pockets here in South Florida. If I'm going to find that mantis, I'll need to pull out all the stops and really challenge myself as an insect hunter. And if you want to see what techniques I use to track down strange and bizarre mantises in the wild, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.